Hey guys, Handsome Blader here, and today I'm going to be building my very first mechanical keyboard. And reason why, you may ask, well, the reason I'm building my first mechanical keyboard is recently I built my own PC, link to that video down in the description, and I feel like my room could get a little more spiced up. My PC currently has a keyboard and mouse that I feel are great for remembering the keyboard, but like, not really that good. I'll let you guys be the judge of that, but like, here it is, right? It's full size, so like, my, I don't know about you, but like, my uh, desk has like a little keyboard drawer, right? So, it's very small, so having a full size keyboard with this entire numpad that I won't be using, won't be using most of these keys, it kind of like, just doesn't allow me to move my mouse. So I decided that I would be building my very first keyboard. I'm very excited. And actually before I thought of building another keyboard, I was actually looking into the Steel Series Apex Pro TKL, which is another amazing keyboard. But I just felt like the customization options and the fun of everything would be a lot more if we built our own keyboard. So that's what we're doing today. And this is my old one. So these are all the parts. I'm very excited. Let's get into it. All right, so to build a keyboard, well, of course you're gonna need some parts to build that keyboard. And now that I'm looking at them all together, there's really not that much. I mean, I felt there would be a lot more, but pretty much these are the parts we're gonna use to build the keyboard, starting off with our cable, right? So once we build it, every keyboard needs something to power it. A cable that connects to the PC that'll power the keyboard, right? How else is it gonna send the signals? So this is the Cable Mod Classic Coiled Cable. I got it in black because it's a very neutral color as well as it will match my color scheme. It costs around $30, uh, so I think it is quite expensive, but then again, most coiled cables are pretty expensive. So yes, this is our cable that we're going to be using. All right. So this is our keycap set. So I'll show you guys in a little bit, but like this is our keycap set. We went for the drop skylight series keycaps, right? And this is pretty much so when you think of a regular key, you usually think of the keycap, right? The keycap is like a little cap that goes over a switch that has like the letter or the number or the function key, right? So this is a keycap set. It cost about $50, but we managed to get use an Amazon gift card to make it cheaper. Then, all right, these are stabilizers. So when I first looked into this hobby, I was like, what are these? They sound really complex. But these are called stabilizers, right? And you put them together, and these are pretty much so like every keyboard has like a shift, an enter, and a space, or something like that, right? These stabilizers are pretty much what keep them stable, right? So if you didn't have a stabilizer, it would like be wobbly and it wouldn't you wouldn't pretty much wouldn't be able to type with them. So this is what keeps them stable. These are the Duroc V2s. I think we got them for around $20 from Kinetic Labs. Then we have switches. All right, so like we have three of these uh, to equaling up to 90 switches. So this is the Gator on Yellows, right? And this is what people refer, refer to as butter on a budget. So this is the cheapest switch there is. But it also can be really good, right? So these aren't specifically regular Gator on Yellows or Gator on Pro Yellows, but they're not Cherry MX like others. But yes, these are Gator on Yellows. These are pretty much what make sure that like, these are what you type on, right? So the keycaps go on top of these. This is what you type on. You can see the stem, I'll show you more later. Now, this is the big boy. All right. So 
Inside here, we this is what is called a build kit, right? I got the KBD 75 V3.1 build kit, and this is a 75% keyboard, meaning that it will have function keys, arrows, and I think some side keys. So this is basically coming with everything else you need, meaning the printed circuit board or the PCB, extra, extra stabilizers, and a case and some foam too. And this is what I would recommend. This cost us about like $220, but I would definitely recommend going for a kit because they come with everything you need and they're guaranteed to be compatible. All right, let's get into the video. All right, so the first step we're gonna do in building this keyboard is to test the PCB and make sure it works. So our PCB is in this uh, build kit for the KBD75, so I'm gonna open up this foam. All right, so this is foam, dampening foam, to make sure that the sound in the KBD75 is dampened. This is our PCB. This is our plate. I went for aluminum because I feel like I like that more kind of loud, high-pitched sound. And then here is our KBD75 V3.1. So we went for the black color. Holy, this is very crazy. It's very beautiful very heavy than I thought, but the first step we're gonna do is test our PCB or our printed circuit board. So this is our hot swappable PCB and and we are going to do testing, we're gonna test it first. All right, so see when we have the materials to test it. All right, so the PCB test didn't go well, so we went straight to installing stabilizers. These are the Duroc V2s, and pretty much it comes taken apart. So it has this little Cherry MX housing right here. Uh, this is a housing, this is a stem, and this golden piece is a bar, right? So we have to put it all together, we did. And so we have our PCB here. This is our space bar uh, stabilizer. And now we have to screw it in. So we have our, you're gonna need a small Phillips head for this. So I would recommend magnetic, it helps a lot, especially for me, but like, yeah. So like you have to like first clip it in, kind of like these tops, they come here, I'll show you on the other side. So you have to kind of like clip it in like this. Right here you can see like this tiny like clip-ins. This one isn't, now you can see that this one isn't really fully clipped in like the other one is, so there we go. All right, so they're both clipped in now, fully. All right, so now that we both have, now that we have both of them fully clipped in, we can get to screwing. So we're gonna attach a washer to a screw like this. Next, put it in. All right, so right here, these two holes is where you attach it. So you put it in, screw it in. Screw it in pretty moderately tight right, until you can't really screw much anymore. And then you repeat for the other side. So we got this. All right. All right, so we just gotta put this one, this wa putting the washer and the screw can be kind of fiddly, but once you get it, you can screw it in. So like, see right here, we have our washer and we have our screw. So we put it in like that. Next, we put it on the screwdriver like this. All right, so now that we have both those in, well, the washer just fell off again. So now that we have both those in, 
we will we can start screwing so I'm gonna put this here and so again screw it in moderately tight all right now flip it over and you have a stabilizer installed this is our first stabilizer and not gonna lie very satisfying extremely satisfying but we have another four to go so let's get right into it all right guys so i finished installing my stabilizers <laughs> looking very nice and it came so Durac v2s come with uh four 2u stabilizers which look like this and one 6.5 or 7u stabilizer which looks like this so I've installed my stabilizers, and next is to install my switches. So, let's get right into that. Alright guys, so we installed a lot here. It looks a lot different. So, we installed our switches, which are the Gatoron Pro Yellows. They're linear, 55 gram actuation point. Then we have um, an aluminum plate. So, this is more like a cloud, kind of clacky noise. Uh, maker if you really want like a thocky deep muted noise I would recommend going for a polycarbonate but at the time I didn't really know much so I went for this and honestly a mechanical keyboard is a mechanical keyboard I'm probably still gonna be very satisfied but we installed this and one thing that I really did face a problem was this plate wasn't fitting onto the like onto the uh in, onto the PCB, so the stabilizers were being a little big. So I, I actually started thinking, should I take out the stabilizers and replace them with the ones that it came with? But I decided not to and try again, and it eventually started working. So we installed this. It would, took quite a while to get the the case open because it, it used some certain screws that we didn't have. So we went, got that screwdriver, and we came, we opened the case, we put it in, everything matches out perfectly, it looks beautiful. We're going on to the final step, installing the keycaps. Alright, so, basically, the last time you saw me in that little clip there, I was done with the keyboard, I needed to put on keycaps. So while I was putting on keycaps, which is the very last step of building this keyboard, I realized I'd messed up with the stabilizers, which just so happened to be the first step of the keyboard. So I have to take apart the entire keyboard, rebuild the keyboard, and then it would be good. But and I ended up doing it, it all worked out fine. Just a few broken switches, by few I mean a lot. Maybe like 10, 15, but like we made it through. The beautiful keyboard is done. Doesn't sound clacky or thocky, it sounds creamy. And that's what I'm happy about. We also have my old office keyboard and can send you off without a sound test, right? So, all right, here's the sound test. All right, so that was like a little short sound test of this, right? So one sec. All right, this is a stabilizer test. So honestly, it's regular membrane, right? And now it's time for my mechanical keyboard test. All right, so this is the KBD 75, my build, 
Hope you like it. I'm very impressed with the results. All right, now stabilizer test. All right, so I think it sounds very creamy, very nice. I do feel like it sounds very nice and creamy until you get to the space bar, right? So like if you if you hit the space bar lightly, it sounds like this. I feel like the stabilizers do make a lot of noise, but that's okay because it used to sound worse. I had to put tissue paper in it to actually make it sound better, and it works, it really does. But yeah, I feel like the stabilizer, could, I mean, the space bar could be better. Everything else sounds nice. I like this caps lock key a lot. It's really muted, but I'm very blown away by the results. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. This is my KBD 75 V3.1 build. And for now, hands of blader out.